So if you were here last year, Raina Hatsiuk, who's the um, coordinator for digital collection, sorry, coordinator for collections and technical services, she was here to talk about the Emerging Local Authors Collection. It is her baby. She couldn't be here this year, so she asked me to talk about it. So I'm going to try not to repeat everything she said last year, in case you were here and heard it. Um, but I did want to mention the part of why we started the collection, and this is Brian's absolute favorite statement, is that we wanted to be able to say yes. It's very difficult with local authors, obviously, um, because uh, we want to be able to support them, but it doesn't always work in with how we develop collections. Um, Victoria has a large local author community. Uh, sometimes it feels like the retirement plan for candidates to move to Victoria and write a book. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's the books vary in quality, both in terms of the content and also in terms of, um, you know, the um, carrier, basically. So we were looking for something that we could do in order to be able to allow the local authors to bring their books in without us having to spend a lot of extra time reviewing the books. Um, so briefly, ELAC itself, was started in 2015 with print books, and then in 2016 we moved to print and digital books. So this was our second year with both formats. Our focus is local, which for us means Southern Vancouver Island. It's pu books published within the last five years. They can be self-published or through a publisher, all genres, all ages, fiction, nonfiction. It's not a curated collection. If authors want to be involved and they fit the requirements, that's great. And all the books are donated to us. Um, we have set it up as a yearly collection. So it starts with authors submitting applications in the fall, and then we collect the books and the information over the winter, we put records into the library catalog, and then in the spring, usually beginning of May, we have a public launch of that year's collection that we, where we're promoting the collection out to the general public. The print books are kept on display in our central branch, front and center, right when you walk in the door for the year. We're really trying to it's not just a hidden collection. We want this to be something that everybody gets to see. So after the year, the print books are pulled from the collection. Like when we launch the next collection, the print books are pulled. If they have high circulation or if there are any other special reason, we will add them into the regular collection, at which point they can sink and swim on their own merits. Um, otherwise, they are discarded. The ebooks at this point, what we've chosen to do is we keep them in our platform, which is BiblioBoard, but we no longer have them as part of the Emerging Local Authors collection specifically. That's each year we have a new collection that we're newly promoting. Um, so this year we had 147 titles for the 2017-2018 collection. 91 print, 11 digital, and then 45 that were in both formats. And so far the collection is seeing some use, which is great because again, these are local authors that probably have not been heard of other than by their own families. Um, so we've had, uh, in the first month, there were 133 circulations of uh, physical books and 32 circulations of ebooks. So for the ebooks, we use BiblioBoard as our platform. We were looking for, this is BiblioBoard, it's up on the screen now. Um, we were looking for something that allowed us a lot of control over how we uh, established the collection. We wanted to be able to group things, we wanted to promote it, we wanted it to be independent from other ebooks. We didn't want it to just be part of a larger collection. And Bibli Award definitely gave us that. You have lots of control over how you set it up. What we see here is this is our current collection. And like we chose how to organize it, the category, that sort of thing. Um, Bibli Award has some other really good things. If a library is interested in doing self-publishing, they offer something called Pressbooks, which is a book formatting software. Um, they also offer something called Selfie, which is where Bill Award itself hosts indie author books, and the titles are actually reviewed by a library journal who picks, makes the selections and picks of their favorite ones that can be promoted that way as well. They do um, uh, all sorts of indie Canada um, collections themselves by region, so there's the Saskatchewan collection, the BC collection, that sort of thing, of the books that get put in through the Selfie program, and also whatever libraries put in themselves. Um, they offer uh, multiple formats, so you can choose to go beyond the book, and you can add, put in music, video, that sort of thing. Uh, it has lots of potential for the future. Ourselves, we're considering using, putting together a local digital music collection to supplement our local CD collection, which we could use the real board for. Uh, we've also been looking at it potentially for a digitization project 
with crowdsourced material from the public around a specific Victoria event. We haven't decided why yet, but that's another thought that, again, we can use Biblio Board for because it is does support all sorts of different formats. So for us, the upsides for Biblio Board are really fantastic customer service and support. They are wonderful. They're incredibly helpful. They always get back to you right away. They'll help you set things up the first time. They'll do things for you. They'll show you how to do things. Um, they check in every couple months just to say, hi, how's it going, that sort of thing. And of course, obviously let us know whatever new is coming up. But they've, it's been really wonderful working with them. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have lots of control over the organization and display. So what we've chosen to do ourselves is we have our current collection, and then we also have this collection here, Greater Victoria Public Library, where we've just put all the books that we have, and it'll just grow each year. But we could choose to do things in a different way if we wanted. We, we build this ourselves. We build the anthologies, we build the little modules inside, whatever we want to do, or what suits us best. And of course, we build what displays on this page entirely. So if we wanted to add something else in, we could have another section. Uh, and then, of course, the potential for other uses with the fact that it does multiple formats that we can potentially use it for things beyond just this particular thing. Downsides for Biblio Board, it's a fairly pricey product. Um, it is an American company, so there are other privacy implications attached to that. And then the downside, which you're going to see with pretty much any platform that you get that isn't a platform you're currently using, is that it is a separate platform from all of our other ebooks. So there's that multiple platform fatigue that I'm sure every library is experiencing right now because. We all have books in multiple platforms, and how do you get people to go to this one if they're always used to using Cloud Library or something like that? Um, so in terms of what we're, where we go from here, we're pretty happy with our process at this point. Not much is going to change, but there are a couple things that have come that are exciting to us. One is that BiblioBoard has just launched um, the ability within this for people to upload their own um, files and metadata, it's still controlled by us, so it's not uploaded for the public to see, but it's rather than us doing the uploading, they are doing the uploading, which will save us a lot of time. So that's really fantastic. Uh, and that'll make sure that there's a little bit less back and forth with trying to, you didn't give us all the information you needed, that sort of thing. Uh, we've also recently discovered that um, we use Enterprise for our library catalog discovery tool, and that Enterprise offers the option to upload your own covers if you wish, which is great because one of the issues we've had with self-publishing -publish is that um, we our covers in our catalog come through Syndetics and self-published -pub authors don't have their covers in there and they were all very unhappy when they went to the catalog and didn't see their covers. So we have we do tell them they have to go to Baker and Taylor and Bowker and add it, but it's a very complicated process and a lot of them have been very frustrated with the process. So if we can solve save some time on their part by scanning covers and putting them in ourselves. At this point, the collection's not so big that that would be a huge trial, and that would be really nice for us. We are also um, going to be clarifying on the application form that these books become GBPL's property, uh, that the authors can't ask for them back at the end, that we may or may not put them into the regular collection. There's been, you know, it was a the first year was a bit of a trial run, and there was a bit of confusion of, over what it meant for <coughs> authors giving the books, and a lot of authors wanted them back when we were done, or were wanted to make sure that they were, no, they were, why aren't they still there? And so we're making sure it's very clear also that if they disappear within regular circulation, we're not going to purchase a replacement copy. If they want to give us another copy, they're more than welcome to do that, that sort of thing. And then finally, because we are so excited about this, we're looking at ways to get more authors involved. And by we actually mean public services. So they are looking at more ways to get more authors involved because we would like to grow this. We'd love it to get big enough that we could uh, have the collection in more than one branch. Right now it's all in one branch just because of the size. But we'd like it to expand to the point where it doesn't all fit on the one display case that we have and then we have to break out to another branch and that would be fantastic. Uh, so that's it. Any questions? Yeah, just you, at the end you're talking about purchasing. So obviously the in some cases, you're paying. No, authors. we're not. Oh, they're all okay. donated. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, I was wondering some, about some, yeah, some authors uh, had said when the book went missing, well, you're gonna, do you want to buy a copy to replace it? Right. But I this see. is a this is a donated collection. Okay, very yeah. good. I, that's what that was my understanding. Yeah. I just wanted some clarification. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Anything? We're getting the video board too, and uh, one thing that I missed asking is: Is it able? Are you able to transfer them to e-readers? 
or is it just through the app? Um, um, how do you transfer into e-readers? Uh, that's actually a very good question, and I think you, no, because I, I don't think you can download them. I, you know what, I actually don't know the answer to that question. I'm well, sorry. I'm not alone. Okay, so, um, I emailed them, I'll let you know what they say. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe there's an ability to download the titles, which would mean that you wouldn't be able to transfer them to an e-reader. They do have their own app, obviously, so, yeah. Anything else? Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Julie Douglas from the Vancouver Public Library and it was so wonderful to hear how successful your program is at GVPO. Uh, we definitely do inspiration from you. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about our story um, and that is that this time last year, VPL was taking some very early steps in establishing a local self-published authors collection. And the truth is that we've always collected self-published authors, but we wanted to approach it in a more focused way. And it was actually at last year's summit that we reported out on some of the research that we were doing on different ebook platforms. And I can tell you today that we've actually chosen our platform, and it was just last month that we launched the Vancouver Indie Authors uh, Collection. So we're very, uh, very excited about that. And very similar to GGPL, in that we wanted to give our local authors a platform to share their stories. And it was also about being responsive to trends that we've seen in the publishing industry, uh, especially in terms of the huge increases in the number of self-published titles that are available. And we feel that there are a number of benefits in offering an indie author collection. For our local writers, um, we're helping them to increase their exposure and find a wider audience. And now that we have this streamlined submission process, we're making it a lot easier for them to get their books into the library. So we've kind of removed a lot of that mystery and confusion for authors about how they get their books into the library. And our libraries offer a spectrum of services. So we can help writers with their research, they can attend a program and connect with other writers, and they can create an ebook in our digital labs. And now we have this dedicated digital and phys physical space that we can display their books. So it's really sort of a natural extension of what our libraries are already doing. For our readers, we're giving them greater choice and making it easier to find these types of books. And for the library, it aligns with our mission, it aligns with our values, and in the case of VPL, it supports our strategic goal to showcase content that's created by our very own users. And sort of on top of all of that, we're also deepening our connections with our local authors. So I'll just show you This is what we launched in March, so not that long ago. And what you'll see here is um, an outline of our selection criteria. We also have some, over on the far right, some frequently asked questions. And down at the bottom, we've got our submission form for our authors to tell us about their books. So, Essentially, everything authors need to know about uh, submitting their books for us to purchase can be found on this web page. And we've been collecting author submissions since March, and to date we have over 100 print and digital titles in the collection. So I'll show you what that looks like. Can navigate <laughs> this computer. Maybe I need a little help, Sarah. <laughs> I just want to go with the page. Oh, it's a touch screen. Right. Okay. Almost there. Okay, so this is our ebook collection, which is hosted on Odillo. 
And so what we've got here is a combination of titles that we've uploaded ourselves. And then on the bottom carousel, those are the titles that we've actually purchased from the Odillo marketplace. And these are popular uh, self-published titles from around the world. And in terms of our circulation stats uh, in the first three weeks, uh, on the print side, we have 53 checkouts and six holds. And for the ebooks, 23 checkouts and eight holds. And our most popular book has been a YA fiction book. And um, just like with any large project like this, there certainly have been some challenges. Um, one of them is that we have created this new submissions process for our authors. And with that, we've created some new internal workflows as well. So uh, we'll certainly continue to refine those workflows, but um, it has meant that staff have needed to adapt their approach somewhat and adjust to something that is new. Um, but I can honestly say that they've stepped up to the job and, and really done some amazing work. The ebook platform itself, um, for the most part, we're very happy with it, but there have been a couple of issues. Um, one was with the use of DRM. So we were under the impression that it was an optional thing, but it turns out that in order to act like a library book, DRM definitely needs to be sign assigned to each title. And so we just discovered this before we were about to launch, and so we needed to make some last minute changes. Mm -hmm. So that came as a bit of a surprise. Um, and then with the actual curation tools, they don't allow as much customization as we would like. So that's that's been another issue, but uh, we'll certainly advocate for, for changes that we would like to see to the platform. And there have definitely been a lot more successes than challenges. Um, and one of the most important outcomes, I think, is that we've developed relationships with our local authors and the writing community. And one example that I'll share with you is it was on our launch Day and we met a grade nine student and she had just won a poetry contest and so she was absolutely thrilled at the idea that one day her collection of poetry could be available in the library so definitely this project has created a lot of goodwill and support for the library so what comes next we will be issuing a second call for submissions later this fall and we'll start to assess how the collection is performing. And then looking ahead to 2018, we'll start thinking about weeding the collection after the first year and planning for expansion into the branches. So that is the Vancouver Indie Authors Collection. Thank you very much, everyone.